as we go there. Hey now, Facebook. Good evening. It is really great to be with you tonight. Uh, today is November 23rd. It is Monday, November 23rd. It is Thanksgiving week. Oh, wow. Um, and today, um, well, wow. Uh, I'll, I'll update you on my day in a, uh, in a second. I kind of ran out of order of what I normally do here. My name is Mick Shriver. I'm an Episcopal priest. I serve two parishes in a town called Ludington, Michigan. The first is Emmanuel Lutheran, and the second is Grace Episcopal. And every night at 9 o'clock, we gather people from the parishes, that is, as, long as, as well as people from, well, all over the place, actually. We gather together, and we have a time of checking in and a time of sharing, and um, we usually have an adult beverage together. Tonight, I'm just having just a regular Coke Zero. If I'm going to have a soda, I have that. So, And it has nothing else in it, so it's not a rum and Coke or... Um, Jack and Coke or anything like that. Just in the mood for, I'm not, I don't drink soda often, but every once in a while I get in the mood for it. And, uh, geez, uh, we say a prayer together or two. We say the nightly office from the Episcopal tradition. It's called Compline. We read some scripture. We, uh, say some prayers for people who've asked us to pray for them. And, well, that's about it. That's what we do together. And uh, if this is your first time with us, great, great to have you with us. Tonight, we're going to be talking about God's faithfulness, okay? All right. So, um, Monday, we didn't have a staff meeting today because, well, the governor of Michigan, um, we're under a, we're under restrictions. It's not a stay-at-home order, um, but if at all possible and you can limit your contact with people and whatnot. That's what we're under right now. So uh, we, we didn't have a, a staff meeting today. We did have a, a, a meeting at the church this evening where we did separate ourselves. Uh, we're paying close attention to what we're doing. Okay. And that's about it. Um, let's check in with you guys and see who's in the room and see how your day is going. All right. So Sharon Walton, uh how you doing sharon sharon was one of the ones at the meeting so it's great to great to see you tonight sharon um and as that meeting broke up you did say i'll see you later on kelly rivera from down in houston hey good evening she says to everyone good evening right back at you kelly and kathy i beam probably sitting there right next to uh uh night right next to my buddy um ben and uh ben probably went out hunting today and Judy Hunsuckle just came in. Hey, Judy. It's great to have you with us tonight. So tonight we're going to talk about um, the devotion writer is going to tell you about some people that she ran into in her ministry. And I can absolutely uh, testify to what the devotion writer is writing about. Uh, because a number of times I've run into people in just the very same situation where no matter what I'm going through at the time, it pales in comparison to something that somebody else is going through or something that, well, a parent has to watch their child go through. And um, it, it makes the troubles that I uh, call troubles seem anything but. So so that's the, uh, that's the message of the, the devotion tonight, that through it all, God is faithful. Um, that's the theme of the scripture tonight. And that's what we're going to go over. So the reading tonight is from 2 Timothy, uh, close to the back of the New Testament. It's going to begin with the second chapter, the eighth verse. Okay. And we had a couple of, let's see. Kathy says, Ben's day was fun, got his tractor stuck. Twice. <laughs> I did not hear about this one. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Um, uh, I'm I'm glad he got it out. Assuming he did get it out, or else he's still in the woods trying to get it out. So, and Michelle Hummel says howdy from Pennsylvania. Hey, Michelle, it's great to have you with us. We are in Second Timothy, 
chapter 2, verse 8. For those of you who have your scripture along, our scripture with you, welcome to read along with. If not, don't worry about it. Just sit back, relax. I'm about to read it to you anyway. Verse 8 through 13. Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead, who is from the family of David. This is the good news I preach. And I am suffering because of it, to the point of being bound with chains like a criminal. But God's teaching is not in chains. So I patiently accept all these troubles so that those whom God has chosen can have the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. With the salvation, oh, excuse me, with that salvation comes glory that never ends. This teaching is true. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we accept suffering, we will also rule with him. If we say we don't know him, he will say he doesn't know us. If we are not faithful, he will, he will still be faithful because he must be true to who he is. The devotion writer writes and titles the devotion tonight, The Faithful Presence of Christ. A teenager I'll call Kathy had been born with a deformed spine and endured many surgeries to correct it. I visited her in the hospital the day after they placed, they placed her in a striker frame. Her body immobilized, so all she could do was look straight up. She smiled as she saw me and said, I'm okay, Pastor. How are you? All my problems seem to pale in comparison. We often take God's faithfulness for granted, but the writer to Timothy relies on it to endure the pain he faces as part of his commitment to Jesus. He accepts God's grace as sufficient and trusts God's faithful presence to sustain him. Indeed, even when our faith waffles, Christ remains faithful to us and on behalf of us to God, his Father. A person with paraplegia told me as he, was, as he lay dying, I'm, look forward, I'm looking forward to walking again. We too look forward to the day when all wrongs will be corrected and every hurt will be healed. In the meantime, Christ promises to walk faithfully with us through it all. A prayer tonight that goes with the devotion. Strengthen my faith, Jesus, to accept whatever comes, knowing that you are with me. Amen. And the prayer concern for tonight is for those who live in constant pain. Not too long after I had been ordained an Episcopal priest, I had the opportunity to, well, to be with a family as this woman and this daughter watched their their husband of oh 65 years i believe it was um watched her husband slip away and the husband after talking to me he diabetes had taken his sight um he was an he was a double amputee um he could barely hear anymore he was in his 90s and he he begged me to tell him why god just wouldn't let him die already all i could answer him at the time was to tell him that we don't know God's purposes, but that there is something yet for, for you to teach. There's some reason why, why God hasn't called you home yet. That man was on his deathbed for the next 30 days. 
and I saw a family come together. And I was, well, I was the first person that I had watched go through the dying process. And for a family to let a, a priest into that, into that moment with them, it's incredibly humbling. And to watch somebody pass from this life into the next, wow. It is an incredibly holy period that I, I have the honor of walking with a family during that time. Walking with a person as they transfer, so to speak. There was a reason why he was still here. It was to teach me a lesson, a lesson that I'll never forget. When I think about the problems that I have from day to day, I often think back to that question that that man asked me upon his deathbed and then the walk for the next 30 days with his family. I'm grateful for experiences that other people would look at and say, how could you be grateful for that experience? No, I definitely am. And now we turn our attention to uh, the prayer list. Uh, we divide it into um, little chunks each day. And today we start with Eleanor, uh, joining Eleanor in praying for her husband, Jim, um, as Jim's health is failing. And, um, well, we just show them both love, okay? Eleanor, if you're watching, we miss both of you. God bless both of you. Debbie, uh, we pray with you um, and Nate for Nate's friend, Chad, and for, let's see, for Kaylee, Austin, and Kim, okay? All right. Uh, Allison, we join you in praying for your mother, Marla. And Vicky, we pray, uh, we join you in praying for your dad, Larry. And we'll kind of hold right there, okay? All right. Pick up the rest of that list tomorrow. Now comes the time when we turn our attention to the nightly office from the Episcopal tradition. It is called Compline. Michelle Markey and I also knew somebody in high school in our freshman year. Um, her name is Karen. And Karen, I think for our entire freshman year, wore a full body cast. Um, I never did ask Karen. Karen became a good friend of, of mine. Um, but you know, I never did ask her why she had that body cast on when we were in, when we were freshmen. Um, I just figured if there ever came a time that she wanted to talk about it, then she would tell me about it. Uh, other than that. Hmm. Anyway, the night the office starts with the opening sentence, also called the, inv the invitatory. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening's office is Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. And the lesson tonight is taken from Matthew's Gospel. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the canticle is the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And now, I <laughs> should have put my phone on silence there. Sorry about that. For those of you who will be watching first thing in the morning and using this as part of your morning devotion, oh, here's a morning prayer for you guys. Okay. Holy Father, you call my name and wake me once more, that I may know you and love you with all my heart, soul, and mind. Keep me watchful for all the ways that you come to me this day, that I may serve you in all things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Well, guys, that, well, let me see. There's a couple more notes in here. Let me look. Okay, D. Falk says, hey. So D and D are with us tonight. Hey, guys. Michelle, you are amazing. No, Michelle, I'm not. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like anybody else. I've just had experiences that God has gifted me with, and I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you, Michelle. Priscilla Burns, love you all from Mike, J, Nate, and Priscilla. <laughs> Whatever I called you the other day, I'm sorry about that. But yes, Priscilla and Lizzie, don't don't forget Lizzie. She's there too. All right, guys. Of course, you. I know you don't forget her. You're right there. Um, that's it for tonight, man. I will see you here, same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow night at nine o'clock. Until then, be well, be safe, love each other, love God with all of your heart. And as my pop says, good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. I'll see you all right here tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Facebook. <laughs>